Let's read some examples of Jesus doing good and healing people before his crucifixion, before his death. Jesus attended to every disease and sickness. In Matthew chapter 4, verses 23 and 24, King James Version reads, And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with divers diseases and torments, and those which were possessed with devils, and those which were lunatic, and those that had palsy, and he healed them. The True Bible Study translation reads, And he used to lead around in the whole of Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and heralding forth the good message of the kingdom, and attending to every disease and every sickness among the people. And the thing heard of him went away into the whole of Syria, and they carried towards him all the people having badly, being held together with variegated diseases and torments, being devilized, and being lunatic, and paralytic, and he attended to them. Jesus spent time traveling in the entire area of Galilee, instructing in their synagogues, the location where the Judeans or Israelites gathered together every Sabbath and special days to hear readings from the law of Moses, etc. And Jesus was heralding forth a good message, proclaiming the gospel, evangel, pertaining to God's kingdom, God's spirit realm, which is holy and spiritual because God is Holy Spirit. And Jesus was attending to, treating, being therapeutic, taking care of as necessary all or every disease, definite sickness causing mental and or physical decline, and all or every sickness, physical softness or weakness, which is debilitating in and among the people, what Jesus spoke to be heard by others, his report. And this may have included what was being said by others about Jesus regarding what he was saying and doing, went into the whole of Syria, and they brought towards him all the people having badly, something in their bodies, including their minds, that was bad for them, Contrary to what God would want them to have, they were being confined with or by various diseases and torments, forced pains, tortures, being devilized, demonized, being operated, controlled, dominated by devil spirits, fallen angels, and being lunatic, epileptic, which was thought to be related to the different phases of the moon as viewed from the earth, and paralytic are those people who are paralyzed. And what did Jesus do? Jesus attended to them. Jesus treated them. He was therapeutic. He took care of them as necessary. Let's read another record where Jesus attended to every disease and sickness. Matthew chapter 8, verses 5 to 13. King James Version reads, And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion, beseeching him, and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home, sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. And the centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, Go. And he goeth, and to another come, and he cometh, and to my servant do this, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled, and said unto them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. And I say to you, that many shall come from the east and west, and shall sit down with Abraham, and Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And Jesus said to the centurion, Go thy way, 
and as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed in that selfsame hour. The True Bible Study version reads, But after his going into Capernaum, a centurion came towards him, encouraging him, and saying, Lord, my servant was thrown paralytic in the house, being terribly tormented. And he says to him, I, having come, will attend to him. And the centurion, having answered, said, Lord, I am not sufficient in order that you may come in under my roof, but you must only say with a word, and my servant will be healed. For even I am a man under authority, having soldiers under myself. And I say to this soldier, you must journey, and he journeys. And to another, you must come, and he comes. And to my slave, you must do this, and he does it. But having heard, Jesus marveled and said to the people following, With certainty I say to you, with not one person have I found so much belief in Israel. But I say to you that many people will have come from the risings and the sinkings, and they will be caused to lean up with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of the heavens. But the sons of the kingdom will be thrown out into the darkness, the outer darkness, and crying, and the gnashing of teeth will be there. And Jesus said to the centurion, You must go, for as you believed, it must be caused to become to you. And the servant was healed in that hour. After Jesus went into Capernaum, a centurion, a Roman military officer, commanding a hundred men, came towards him, exhorting Jesus and saying that his servant was paralyzed and dreadfully tormented. Jesus told the centurion that he would go to the location where his servant was, and then he would attend to him, treat him, be therapeutic, take care of him as necessary. The centurion responded to Jesus and again addressed him as Lord or Master, saying that from his viewpoint, he was not at the point of being eligible for the purpose of Jesus going into his house. But the only thing that Jesus would need to do is to speak the specific word necessary in this situation. And then a servant will be healed, caused to recover from his illness. The centurion continued by explaining to Jesus why he believed this way regarding Jesus and the potential healing of his servant. He said, I am a man under authority legally subject to the authoritative power of another. And I have military men who are under my authority, legally subject to me. And I say to this soldier, you must pass from here to there. And he does what I say. And I say to another soldier, you must come. And he does what I say. And to my slave or bond servant, you must perform this. And he does what I say. The centurion acknowledged that Jesus was a man under authority, under God's authoritative power, and that Jesus had or held people, things, or situations under himself, whereby when Jesus said something to a person, thing, or situation, then it would have to be done, because he spoke under the authority of the one, God, over him. The words that Jesus spoke were God's words the inner thoughts of God during whatever situation Jesus was in at any particular time. You can also refer to John chapter 8, verses 28 and 29, chapter 12, verse 49 and 50, and chapter 14, verse 10. When Jesus heard the words from the Roman centurion, he was astonished and said to the people following him, With certainty, truly, surely, amen. I say to you, I did not find such an amount of belief, faith, trust relative to God and the things of God. Belief or faith is the information that God makes known to people to have confidence in with assured certainty and surety. In this context, the belief or faith included the truth that Jesus was carrying out God's will at that time. So Jesus said, with certainty, I say to you, I did not find such an amount of belief with not one person in Israel. 
the Roman centurion believed regarding the authority that God had given to Jesus, but the Israelites had not believed as much of what they were given to believe by God and by Jesus up to that point in time. In verse 13, Jesus said to the centurion, You must go as you believed, as you have had faith, as you trusted regarding my authority from God to heal your servant, it must be caused to come to pass for you. And immediately the servant was healed. He was caused to recover from his illness.